Hi Scott, and this is Mike from Stagecoach Road Vintage Sewing Machine. And this is your mom's Stinger 401A. She's been restored and detailed and rigorously tested. And this is the final test. So, uh, no doubt you watched your mom sew on this and maybe sewn on it yourself. Um, but uh, we're going to give you a little refresher on how to wind the bobbin, how to set your stitch patterns, uh, how to thread the machine, uh, and just how to do some of the basic operations. Uh, we'll start by winding a bobbin. and. Um, This is your bobbin winder. Your bobbin goes on here, and this one is spring loaded so it holds itself in place. You don't have to uh, align it with a uh, pin like on some of the other machines. So, to wind the bobbin, uh, put your spool on the lower spool pin here, go under the thread guide and up into one of the holes on your bobbin. A fresh end on your thread really helps to get it through some of the small holes. Like the one in your needle, for instance. So you put the thread through one of the small holes on the uh, bobbin, and you wind in this direction and then onto your the spindle of your bobbin winder and at this point you can cut off that little tail of thread. Declutch the machine by turning the chrome knob in the center of the hand wheel towards you, eighth of a turn or so you'll feel it stop. <coughs> Excuse me. And we're ready to wind. Uh, push the uh, bobbin winder up until the wheel makes contact with the hand wheel, and off you go. You don't need to go real fast. You see it's winding a nice, even thread pattern there. We're not going to wind the full bobbin. That was just for uh, the sake of our test. To insert your bobbin into the machine, you want your thread to be coming off the back this way. You drop it into the center of the hook there and catch this little notch right here and pull it until it you feel it click into place and you'll feel just a little bit of tension on the thread. <clears throat> then you can close your slide plate, but I always put the thread in this little notch. So make sure that you have a felt on your spool pin. The felt keeps your uh, spool from spinning out of control and uh, making a snarly mess. Put your spool on the spool pin. Go through the upper thread guide here. Down between, down between the uh, convex plates of the uh, upper tension. And there are two sets here, so you can use a uh, double needle or two needles at once. Um, so it doesn't matter which set of plates you go between. Um, put your finger on the uh, spool to give it a little bit of tension while you pull up on the check spring. Pull up until your thread can go back into this little notch right here. And then when you pull up, your little check spring here should go up and down as you pull it, and you know that you're in the right place. Go into this big thread guide here, and then through the take-up lever. From right to left. Down into this thread guide. 
this thread guide, this thread guide, and this thread guide, and then through the eye of the needle from front to back. To bring up to bring up your bobbin thread, uh, tighten your clutch wheel again, your knob, and put your bobbin winder out of the way. Hold the end of the thread that's coming out of your needle. Just give it a little bit of tension, not enough to flex the needle, but just so it's not hanging loose. And turn the hand wheel one time towards you. And that will Take the thread down, wrap it around the bobbin, and uh, create your lock stitch. And then just take the thread and pull it up. The thread goes between the toes of the presser foot and toward the back of the machine. And that's it. You're threaded and ready to sew. fabric under the presser foot and if you plan to make zigzag stitches or stitch patterns make sure that you have the zigzag plate which has an elongated center hole. Uh, the machine arrived here with the straight stitch foot and a straight stitch uh, throat plate which has a tiny round hole for straight stitching which gives you more support on your fabric and creates a prettier stitch but only for straight stitch. Otherwise you break your needle and put your machine out of time and all sorts of other things you don't want to do. We're gonna change thread to make it show up a little bit better on this uh, light fabric. That pale yellow is not working too well with this color. So, you're gonna get to see me thread the machine a second time. Put your spool on the spool pin, make sure that there's a felt in place. Go through your upper thread guide between the discs of the upper tension assembly. And again, there's two sets of discs there. It doesn't matter which pair you go between. Uh, hold your uh, spool to put a little bit of tension on it while you pull the thread up until you clear that little notch. You're gonna pull, the thread will pull the check spring up uh, until the thread can go in this little notch right here. Uh, when you pull on your thread, then it should move the check spring up and down. Go into the big thread guide here above it, and through the take up lever from right to left. And it's good to put a nice clean end on your thread for going through small holes. Makes your life easier. There's another thread guy here. Here, thread guide here. Thread guide here, and a thread guide here. And then through the eye of the needle, and that's frayed again a little bit. So I'm going to cut a new end before I try to poke it through the eye of the needle. thread has already been pulled up. You just go between the toes of the pressure foot, presser foot and to the back of the machine. Put our fabric under the presser foot and we're ready to go. Hold your threads as you start out. I'm going to uh, shorten the stitch length just a little bit. This is your stitch length lever. Uh, down is forward, up is reverse. In the center at zero, 
It doesn't go anywhere. It just stitches in place and makes a big old ball of thread under your fabric so your fabric can't move. It's not a good thing. So uh, as you go further down, your stitches get longer. As you go further up, your stitches get longer, the further you get from zero. Now, if you want to be able to uh, back tack and have the same length stitches in reverse as you have in forward, tighten down, not super tight, just snug. Uh, and when you go to reverse, you'll go the same distance as you were and forward so you have the same length stitches. I'm going to take that off so we can go full length if we want to. Right now we're set at about oh, 10 stitches per inch which is kind of a medium length stitch. Um, this is your sti stitch width lever. That's zero, that's five. We're going to go on zero for now and do some straight stitching. And to do that, we need to set the stitch pattern. Under here, you have a uh, a chart. Under here, you have a chart of the different stitch patterns. And it says here, uh, straight stitching is A through K, zero to three. So, to set the uh, A through J side, you push in the outer knob <coughs> and turn to A. To set the lower knob to K, you pull out the inside knob and turn it to K. And again, uh, we want uh, a uh, straight stitch, so we're going to Set the stitch width on zero. So here we go. I'm gonna hold the threads, hold the thread out. And you don't have to go fast. No reason to hurry. That's a nice, well-balanced stitch. Do a little bit longer stitch length. Yeah, you're still not going to be able to see those stitches on the camera, but they're nice and straight and even. And the upper and lower tensions are balanced. So how about uh, zigzag? Make sure your needle's up out of, the, out of the fabric before you start changing stitch patterns. And let's see, for a zigzag, it looks like we want B and L. So we push in the outer knob, turn to B. Pull out the inner knob and turn to L, B and L. Now we'll add some stitch width. And we'll shorten it way up. We'll do a wider stitch width. When you get into this area here marked fine, uh, it's a good idea to switch to your satin stitch foot, which looks a lot like the zigzag foot, except it's got a little channel cut in the bottom of it, uh, so it can glide over the humped up satin stitch, because it does raise up a little bit from the fabric uh, when you put your stitches that close together. So we're just kind of on the verge of it, so we don't quite need a satin stitch foot for this. We 
do have good speed control on this machine. Lift your uh, pressure foot control in the back here, pressure foot lever. It presses the, uh, it has a mechanism inside that separates the discs of the upper tension so you can pull your fabric out without flexing and bending your needle. Then there's a thread cutter built into the back of the uh, pressure bar here. Both sides look good. Um, let's see, how about another stitch pattern? That's cool. We'll do EP, which makes a, an interesting stitch. Remember to have your needle up out of the fabric. Push the outer knob in and turn to E. Pull the inner knob towards you. Turn to P. Make sure that your knob snaps back into place. If you're not exactly on it, your uh, this knob will uh, stay out, and don't want that. Okay, EP, and we've got a short stitch length. Here we go. And now uh, let's try B and R. That's a fun one. Needle up, push it in, pull it out. Go and you can see the two different stitch patterns that we made here. I'm going to go get a stitch pattern tent because you may have a set at home. You may want to use them. Using the stitch pattern cams is easy. And if you don't have these, you can find them anywhere on the internet. And sometimes at your local thrift store. The, there's a little guide post as well as the center pin that it goes on so you really can't set it wrong you just put it in and press it down for the special discs you want to press the outer button in and go to a pull the inner one out and go to special Right there at the top. Okay, for the diamond patterns, you'll want to uh, find stitch, uh, yeah, stitch length, so your stitches are as close together as possible. And I'm not sure if I have to set the width on this or not. I don't think so. I think that it does it automatically. Let's see. Um, then again, maybe I do. This is your sewing foot pressure. That's how much pressure it pushes down on the fabric. And you want enough so your fabric's firmly held, but not enough so that the teeth are digging holes in your fabric. Uh, we're gonna go on a wide stitch width for this. The closer you have your uh, stitches to each other, the nicer it's going to look. I'm going to try going just a little bit shorter and hopefully we don't uh, gob up under the foot there.
And that's it. When you're done sewing with, your, with the uh, stitch pattern cam, you just pull it out and uh, set your machine to either straight stitch, which is AK, or to whatever uh, stitch pattern here you choose. Um, it tells you here how to use the two needles, and for that you should refer to your user manual to see exactly how it's done. But that tells you uh, what stitch width you can use. Uh, you, this machine does not have uh, dropping feed dogs like some do. It has a different system uh, for if you want to do free motion sewing like uh, uh, darning or patching holes or doing applique, that sort of thing where you want to be able to move the fabric by hand rather than the feed dogs moving it forward. Uh, with this system, you set the throat plate lever to the up position and the, uh, the uh, throat plate pops up just enough that uh, the teeth of the feed dog don't quite reach the fabric. Um, for this you want to back off your foot pressure quite a bit so you can move the fabric around. Uh, a fabric hoop really helps a lot. Um, an embroidery hoop. Because it stretches your, your uh, fabric out and uh, gives you a little frame to move around. But we're going to do it by hand here. very good at it, but you get the idea. Whoopsie. Uh, as you'll see, the thread has come off the spool and wrapped itself around the pin there. And that held it so hard that it broke the thread. That's because I was sewing with this tipped back. Silly thing to do. Don't do that. Okay, we're threaded up to this point. We're just going to go back into that thread guide. This thread guide. This thread guide. This thread guide. And then back through the eye of the needle after we cut a nice clean end on it. So now, uh, when you want to go back to regular sewing, put your throat plate in the down position, put some pressure back on the presser foot, um, go to zero if you're straight stitching on your uh, stitch width, um, AK on Okay. And a little more stitch length. And that's it. I don't think there's anything I missed. Your light switch is here. Um, this is your upper tension assembly. Um, occasionally, uh, with different fabric, you're going to find, uh, or a different thread, you might find that you're get, getting kind of loopy stitches on the bottom. 
The loopy stitches means that the upper thread isn't pulling up hard enough, so you want to add just a little bit of tension, not too much, just until it pulls those lower threads up snug. And if it's puckering together, like it's pulling down too hard, um, you can try letting up a little bit on your upper tension. If you absolutely have to, uh, there's a little, spool, uh, little screw right here and you can turn it like an eighth of a turn, maybe even less at a time and try it out. Uh, it doesn't take very much at all to change the bottom stitch uh, tension. And uh, if you do change it, uh, uh, when you reset it for regular sewing, you want to have just a tiny bit of um, tension on that. Let's see. So with the thread under the leaf spring of the tension assembly, you want just enough tension that you can just barely feel it. If you have to really pull at it to get it to move, you've got too much tension. And uh, you may have to just kind of do trial and error. Um, there's another method of doing it, but um, that just adds a level of complexity that we won't talk about right now. Uh, so, yeah, it'll be trial and error, you know, uh, set it till you have just a little bit of tension here. Try it. If it's uh, too much, then back it off just like I said, an eighth of a turn on this little screw that's right. It's in line with this notch so you can get your screwdriver down into it. Uh, back it off just a tiny bit and try it again. Back it off a little more and try it again until you get it just right. If it seems like it's too loose and uh, the top threads aren't being pulled down snug into the fabric, uh, you may need to do the same thing in reverse and increase it a tiny increment at a time. But uh, for regular sewing, you'll probably never have to change that if you're using uh, regular fabric and regular thread. Um, if you do need to uh, sew something different, talk to your sewing professional wherever you're buying your thread and your fabric, uh, and they should be able to tell you. Your uh, user manual will, will tell you your user manual will tell you how to oil your machine and uh, if you're using it occasionally you want to oil it probably once a month just one drop of oil in each of the oil holes again check your manual because some of these holes are not oil holes uh, but it'll show you all the points that you want to uh, uh, add one drop of sewing machine oil and only sewing machine oil nothing else The inside of your faceplate has a, a, a threading diagram here in case you forget. Gosh, that's just about all I can think of. Uh, we're going to post this um, on the internet as well uh, for other uh, 401A users um, who uh, don't have the benefit of a mom or a grandma to show them how to do it. Uh, so if you're just coming into this from uh, somewhere on the internet, uh, we are Stagecoach Road Vintage Sewing Machine Restoration. And our web address is Stagecoach Road Sewing, all one word, Stagecoach Road Sewing dot com. Uh, come see us and see all the hundreds of uh, machines we've restored. Um, we have a, a real nice uh, layout of um, well, all the machines we've restored in the last 10 years or so. I'm afraid that we lost 10 or 15 years worth of photos uh, in a devastating computer crash. But anyway, be that as it may, statecoachroadsewing.com. Uh, there's a few machines even that are for sale there, freshly restored and uh, sewing just like when, when mom first bought it. 
So thank you, Scott. It's been a pleasure. I really, really enjoyed working on your mom's machine. It's a beautiful, fine sewing machine. Uh, and it's sewing just great. So, thanks for watching.